All right, so I've had the Topping MX3S for a few days now, and I bought it as a upgrade, uh, more or less a side grade for sound quality, uh, from the NAND D3045. Had the D3045 since 2020, and um, there's a few quirks that I don't like about the NAD, namely the remote control. It doesn't control your media when connected to a USB device like a PC, whereas with the topping, you do get that control. So pressing the media buttons, play, pause, skip tracks, whether it's music, video, uh, YouTube, through the browser, anything like that, you can control that through the remote, which is really quite cool. Obviously, you can do it via Bluetooth anyway, including on the NAD, but it's just a USB control, which I found annoying that you couldn't do that with the NAD, so you couldn't sit back on your home theatre PC or even at your desk if you recline back and chill out with music or media or whatever. You needed a mouse or keyboard uh, within arm's reach to, to sort of control that. Here, you don't have that issue, just use the remote and that's all covered. The other thing I like about the topping, uh, the MX3S especially, is uh, just the compactness of it. It's less than a quarter of the size of the NAD. Okay, the power supply is external, whereas it's internal on the NAD, but even if it was internal here, it would only add a bit more thickness to the unit itself. The footprint is very small and it's horizontal, whereas the NAD is vertical, so you need to sort of make space on your desk to account for that. And this just tucks under the monitor, looks perfect, looks neat, and yeah, you can't really grumble with that. I am using banana plugs. I was using spade connectors before, but the issue I found was because these terminals are so close together and the power inlet is there, spade terminals just kept on hitting the power cord and there wasn't enough space between in the gap here for them to fit properly. So they were sort of sprawling out that way, sprawling out that way. A bit messy, I didn't like that. So I just bought some uh, terminated banana plug cables from Gear IT on Amazon. £16 for a side and um, quality is really good. Braided, 15 AWG, uh, 14 AWG, sorry. And um, yeah, for the price, can't go wrong really. Um, yeah, so the other thing I really like about this is when you either power it on or switch inputs, when you first get the display, it shows you the sampling rate of the input signal, if it's a digital signal. The other good thing is the NAD required the USB driver from NAD to not work, it still works with a Windows driver, but if you didn't install the driver from NAD, you had in Device Manager a unknown item. So if I just bring up Device Manager there, yeah, you'd get an exclamation mark with an unknown item in there, which I just found annoying. Again, my own OCD, I like to have Device Manager a bit clean. So you had to install the driver to then get that there. That device, uh, unless you install the driver, is specifically for updating the firmware on the NAD. So I'm not quite sure why NAD did it that way. It's probably the chipset inside it. Uh, it requires that there when connected by USB in order to work. Um, but you effectively can't update the firmware on the NAD unless you've got that driver installed. Um, something to do with a bootloader. With the topping, there is a USB driver, but you don't need to install it for the MX3S. It's mainly for the DX series and E series of um, their amps and DACs. In terms of input sources, uh, you've got the full slew of digital, and you've also got some uh, an RCA line in as well. So you can plug in a turntable, uh, an analog source, or, or something else. The other thing with this remote, I think I had it with a NAD as well, I can't remember. I don't have that anymore, so I can't test. But whenever you're using a phone like uh, a modern smartphone, I've got the Galaxy S23, the infrared does interfere with the laser. Well, the laser on the phone for focusing interferes with the infrared. So if I have it here and I press the buttons, it doesn't do anything because the laser for focusing is conflicting with the infrared signal from the remote to the unit. So what I do have to do, just for the video, just in case anyone's wondering, is hold it up somewhere like here, and then the remote works. So I will do that throughout the video, um, but if anyone wonders why, that's, that's why that is. Okay, so what I do want to do is just play a couple of videos to start with, and a couple of music that I um, felt really showed off what this amp is capable of. Compared to the NAD, the sound quality is almost exact. 
Similar sort of power for both headphone out and speaker output. I am using the Sennheiser HD 650s, uh, I've got those down there. And yeah, the sound quality is insane. So the fact that this is a 219 pound amp and the NAD 3045 is 699 pounds currently, uh, it's just insane that that price difference exists, yet the sound quality is more or less identical. Okay, the NAD has the slight edge with warmth, but that's the typical NAD sound. I've had that NAD sound ever since the analog days when I had the C325 and C320 BEE uh, amps, huge, massive tabletop amps. Uh, but that sound has translated over to their hybrid D series as well, which is really good to see. But I didn't expect any other amp to be able to replicate that NAD sound, but this is very, very close. In terms of tone controls, you do get treble and bass. That's a feature you don't get on a lot of integrated amps, which is really nice to see. But I'm not really tweaking too much in terms of the sound, uh, the tone controls. I am adding a bit of treble, just plus one, and that is it. Uh, no bass. And you can control all of these through the remote itself. There is a hidden menu which you can access, which cycles through various options as well. Most of them you already have access to through the remote. Um, but there are some hidden ones you can change, like the auto power off when connected to USB uh, and stuff like that. There is a display sleep feature as well. Um, so you can either change the display brightness or put it on auto. I like to have it on L1 because it's an LED display. You don't really have to worry about display screen burn or anything like that but yeah let's uh kick off with playing some content and give you an idea of what this thing sounds like oh before i begin as well there is a gain mode i'm not using any gain mode at the moment um, but the easiest way to change gain on this is just to hold the select button for a few seconds and it goes into h and the gain indicator on the display indicates that gain mode is being applied if there's no gain being applied which is the default L for low gain, then the indicator goes away. So I'll start the content first without low gain, without high gain, and then midway through I'll press the gain button, and then you'll see what it sounds like uh, with high gain. I believe, if I remember right, it's 13 decibels of gain using high gain. It might be more, I can't remember off the top of my head. But the speakers I'm using are Kef Q300, I've had them since new. I swear by them, as far as I'm concerned, they are my end game speakers. The point source of the Uniq driver, I have I love it for desktop use. It just gives you such a spatial sound and immerses you, whether it's games, media, uh, music, whatever. So I really love them. And the bass, the front fire and bass port, and the size of the cabinet itself. I don't need a subwoofer there. It's, it's, the kick down is that good. So uh, yeah, let's start off with the trailer first, and then I'll play a bit of music that I've got. So this is a compilation trailer of some cinematic movies. Uh, this trailer itself is quite good for bass, so you'll get a feel for that. Oh, my God. 
Okay, so that's cinematics uh, in terms of trailer. The games will be the same as well. But yeah, you can hopefully get a feel through the phones, microphones, uh, how good the bass kickdown is. Uh, it's really quite cinematic. In terms of music, uh, vocals and things come out really well as well. And separation of instruments, it has depth, which is a lot of what the other reviews online have said as well. And that's absolutely true here. So instrument separation is separated by depth. And the soundstage isn't narrow, but it's also, it is wide. It's just not as wide as some other amps out there, but it makes up for it with depth. So all of the instruments have layers to them and the vocals. So you can hear where those instruments are within that slightly wider soundstage itself. Hard to describe on a video like this, but you'll get an idea for what the separation and the clarity hopefully is like through some of these tracks. So hopefully that gave a brief look at what the Topping MX3S is like. Um, yeah, for the price, I don't know if there's other amps that are better than this in this compact form factor with this many features and the specs itself. Uh, there's quite a lot of other amps out there actually that are similar, but I don't know how they sound. There's the LOX GA30, which is on paper really good, but I've heard mixed reviews about reliability and also the DAC stage when using USB input. Um, but I've been seriously impressed with the Topping MX3S. The USB input is perfect. I've not used any of the other inputs yet, so I don't know what the analog input is like. I don't know what the optical in is like. Uh, I only use it as a desktop PC for my uh, all my media needs for PC use, and for that it's perfect. And one thing that I also really like is the auto power off feature uh, for the USB connection. I think it's only for the USB. It might apply to the other digital connections as well, but predominantly for the USB from what I've read in the manual and online. So when you press that, the amp itself has two modes, either auto, which is the C, which is off, and then auto zero, which is on. When it's set to C, when you turn the amp off, Windows will no longer detect it. And when it's set to on, so if I turn it back on and flick this to zero, which is on. Now, when I turn it off, Windows will continue to detect it. So it's still there. This is uh, it keeps the USB connection alive basically in a sleep state so it detects the signal when the PC is turned back on so it can then turn the amp back on as well. This is quite good. You didn't get this feature with the NAD. Whenever you put it into sleep mode or it went to auto sleep it would automatically cut the connection so if you had media that was playing that you paused to return to when it wakes back up and you return to playing the media you'd have to reload the uh, media itself or reload the page if it's a stream or YouTube or whatever to then resume audio playback otherwise music or audio just wouldn't play. So I really like this feature this is really cool to see. Um, that's one of those little unique features that unless you experience it then you probably wouldn't even know it exists or it was an issue. So quality of life uh, features like that are really nice with this amp and it just seems better engineered at £219 versus a £699 amp by NAD. Um, so I don't really know where that extra money is going, especially considering it's all plastic, whereas this is all uh, metal. 
and it exerts heat much nicer as well. The whole thing's a heat sink effectively, whereas the NAD only had vents on the lower side. So I don't really know where the heat was going. Probably why the NADs have quite bad reliability in terms of warranty period. Once they're out of their warranty, it's only a matter of time before they fail. Uh, I've had two previous NAD D-series which have failed exactly like that, um, outside of, exactly outside of warranty as well. And um, I've not really heard about any warranty issues with topping, uh, topping amps. And because it's on Amazon, you can just return it and get our amazing things sorted out through Amazon really easily. So yeah, I've been really impressed with this. Um, sound quality is excellent. Headphone amp is excellent as well. Twice the power of the MX-3. But yeah, thanks for watching.